Hi, this is a picture of Duloc in County Mayo and it was taken about a week ago. I put it up on my website and on Facebook and a number of people asked me about the processing of the picture. In fact, I get a lot of questions about how I process my pictures. So I thought I would use this picture as an example of uh, my normal workflow and how I normally go about doing it. So this picture was processed in Lightroom and this is it as it appeared in Lightroom with no processing done. And I'm sure the first thing you'll notice is that it's got a very blue cast to it. The picture looks blue. You wouldn't be happy with that colour. And the reason for that is I've used a, a 10 stop neutral density filter when the picture was being taken. And that's what's given us the, the nice smooth water here and the movement in the clouds because the picture actually took, uh, as you can see up here, 89 seconds uh, with the camera open for 89 seconds. And just for the record, for those of you who are interested, it was on F9. So you can tell it was a fairly dark um, situation, but still the light was, was lovely on the water and that. So anyhow, this is the picture. So obviously the first thing we have to do is to correct the colour. Now to correct colour, um, in Lightroom we can, we can pick a colour, we can use this slider here to slide along and change the colours as we like. And I must confess, I'm not terribly good at that myself. I like to find something in the picture that should be a neutral grey colour. And uh, in this situation we could actually use the boat, for example. If I click on the boat here, we can see that's a much better colour than what we were using already. We could even try using some of the brick in the wall, it's fairly grey in colour as well it's not as correcting as the grey in the boat. But what I often do, because we get a lot of grey clouds in Mayo, I would often actually go to the to the cloud. And in fact when you're doing it you can see these numbers underneath the target there are changing all the time. So if I move over here we can see the numbers are changing. Okay, If I move into the water you know those numbers, the red, green and blue are describing uh, the colours. In fact, I'm just going to hit that there and see what it comes up with. Okay, that wasn't bad, but I'll tell you, normally I find the grey cloud works pretty well, and I'm going to go up here and try this, and I think that's not a bad place to start. Okay, now you obviously you can change it yourself as you wish. Um, one of the things about colour balance is that, particularly in, in landscapes, I don't think there's such a thing as a correct colour balance. Um, I think you can have... Uh, you know, it's very much um, a creative decision. You can decide yourself uh, how warm or how cool you want the picture, but certainly it was far too cool. By cool, we mean blue uh, when we started. This is a bit better. Now, I'm sure you'll agree that the picture as it stands looks a little bit bright, okay? The, the water is very bright. And again, this is one of the creative decisions, if you like, that you take when you're making your photograph. When I made this photograph, I made it as bright as I could. Now, that didn't mean that I was necessarily overexposing it, but I still made it as bright as I could. If you look at the histogram here, I took it all the way to the edge of the histogram. So I made it as bright as I could. If I'd made it any brighter, we'd have lost detail off the histogram. I could have made it darker. Um, but I generally find that if I make the pictures bright to start with, then I have a better chance of collecting detail in the darker areas. So, um, but in this case, I think it is too bright, and I'm actually going to take the exposure down by about a stop. Okay, we're down to um, minus 1.05 there, and immediately we get a much better feeling for the mood um, that I would have seen and felt when I was there. It was this kind of, you know, dark, dark kind of feeling. So, so there we have. We've changed the exposure. Now. I would still think that the highlights, okay, the bright bits just here, are still a little bit too bright for me. So I'm going to bring those back. And uh, in the actual picture that I've showed you before, I actually brought them back to 54. So I'm going to do the same again here. Back to 54. And at 54 we can see this is a good bit darker than it was. But because we only changed the highlights, not like the exposure. When we change the exposure, everything changes. But because it's the highlights um, slider only, it's only the bright areas, maybe one or two areas in the sky, that have changed. But the dark areas haven't changed at all. 
Now, arguably, this is a little bit dark up here and a little bit dark over there. We could do with a little bit more detail in the mountain. So when it comes to the shadows, we could actually do with lifting those a little bit. So I'm going to lift those up, maybe 25, 26, that'll do. And again, we can see a little bit more detail in the uh, shadow areas because of that. The next uh, one we're going to look at, I'm not going to worry about the whites because, you know, it is already pretty white. I don't need it to be any whiter. But blacks, I think it's always good to have a black in the photograph. And so um, I'm going to take the blacks back a tiny, tiny little bit. It's only 10, 11, 12. Um, and all that means is that we will have some black areas in the picture. Very small black areas. And I'll just show you a little trick to, to see if you have a black area. If you press the Alt key your and press the black slider, your picture goes black, or goes white rather. And anything that isn't white, those little black areas that appear, if I bring the slider right back, you'll notice lots of black areas, and they're in the darkest parts of the picture. All we want to do is go from zero down to where we can see those black areas beginning to happen. Okay, we can see it beginning to creep in there now. So I'm going to stop at that, 15, that'll do. Okay, so now we go on to clarity. And clarity is the slider I always use, okay? Clarity gives us, it's like contrast and uh, a little bit of sharpening all at the same time. And if I'm just going to move the clarity up to 27, that's where I had it in the thing. I don't know if you notice any difference. If I put it back to zero, if you watch the picture, you, you'll have seen that change, okay? I'll go back up to 27 again. And it just gives us a little bit of kind of contrast, but it's not... When you apply the contrast slider, it's affecting the darkest areas and the brightest areas. With the um, clarity slider, it's more the mid-tones, but it does give a little bit of extra bite to the picture. The next one then is vibrance. And when you look at this, you, you would think there isn't a lot of colour in this. But watch what happens if I move vibrance all the way up to 100. Now look at all the colours that actually exist in there. Now they're pretty horrible when you exaggerate them that much but it does just demonstrate that there is color in this picture even though it doesn't look like there's a lot of color and so I'm going to put the vibrance up to about 27 or 8 again actually now I'm going to go higher I'm going to go all the way up to 40 and again that just gives us it gives it a little bit of a lift now we go down here I don't worry about um, a lot of these things I'm going to pass all those out split toning sharpening I will sharpen I'll take the sharpening up to maybe 60, 65. Um, down here, this is an interesting um, uh, slider, if you like, or an interesting application here in Lightroom, which is the lens correction. And if I click just enable profile corrections, because I'm using a Nikon lens, um, it actually has a profile for that lens. And you'll notice that the shape of the picture changes slightly. This was taken with a 24 millimeter lens, a zoom lens, 24 to 85, but at 24 millimeter. And at 24 millimeter, it's bending things a little bit. And I'll just switch that off again. You can actually see it's almost like the picture has been flattened in the middle. Okay, so I would always do that. The last one then here is the uh, highlight um, or the post crop vignetting. And this is just gonna darken the edges of the picture a little bit. I'll go right in so that you can really see it. Okay, you can see it's darkening the four corners. Okay, we don't want it that dark, but if I take it back to maybe 29, okay, it looks a bit dark still, but I'll also feather that by taking the feathering up, and that means the, the transition from black uh, down to the bright areas isn't as strong. And that's it, finished, pretty much. Now, I know you're saying, what's that car doing over there? Um, to take the car out, I do have to go over into Photoshop. I'm not gonna do that on the video, but what you've seen is the my almost standard, really. I mean, this that's how I process a picture. Um, and so here it is. This is the picture straight from the camera. And this is the finished picture in Lightroom. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.